clapped of hands to the Lord God Almighty what a God we serve Amen My oh my God is good and all the time <laughs> talk to somebody and say God is good Talk to some other person and say, do you know God loves you? You see, the love of God can only be expressed when we really live for nothing but living for someone. Hallelujah. And in his love, everything we can ever imagine is stored up in there. The Bible tried to describe the love of God. And he said, it's an agape love. He said, no greater love than this. The moment you strive to start living for something, there comes the attitude or the activities of selfishness. Because when you always want to live for that thing, you will want to start acting selfish. But if you give your life, surrender everything and don't tend to hold anything to you the bible say empty we came and empty we shall go naked you came naked you shall go in the place where we try not to be selfish that is where we exhibit and ooze out the true love of god because that love is an unconditional love. It's not a love that seeks for us to love first. It's not a love that seeks for us to do first before he would do for us. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ needed not to see or to look at your righteousness before he would come to die. He said, while we were yet sinners, Christ came and died for us. What a love. <laughs> Where you don't need me to be a perfect guy. What a love. Where I don't need to see you as someone that is perfect. Before I will be able to express love and care to you. And that's why I tell you that for you to operate and see the miraculous because Christianity is not just about going to church and gathering everything you think you can gather and make money praise God some come to church for the sole purpose of because they want to be rich they want to they want to you know they want to be prosperous praise God and I ask a question I say when you attain the place of prosperity what next Praise God. So you must tend to live your life beyond that. You must tend to see things from God's perspective of life. And there you know that the life you are living as a believer now makes much sense. Before Jesus came, everybody believed that they were making sense. Amen. Amen. The prophets of old they prophesied based on how god revealed to them the bible says that they saw in parts and they prophesied in parts but when jesus came he perfected everything that was made and everything that was ever said and we all know that he was both man and god praise god he was complete man tested humanity and also he was god in person also that left heaven to 
to, to die for you and I. Praise God. And so therefore, when we worship, is our spirit man, you know, we try to connect to the Father. Because our spirit came from God. Life will make much sense when you connect yourself with God. Then you find out that selfishness will not be part and parcel of your life. You find out that you start living your life for everyone. Hallelujah. The songwriter says, I put you in front, in front of my melody. Praise God. He said, I'll make room for you. How many of us are going to make room for Jesus today? Hallelujah. Make room for him. Make room. One thing I love about God is that God doesn't force himself on anybody. There is always a set time. And I believe that your set time is today. Amen. Hallelujah. Today we are celebrating the mothers. Praise God. Hallelujah. We are not celebrating M U R D E R S. <laughs> but we are celebrating M O T H E R S. Am I communicating? And I want to say from the depth of my heart as a man that mothers are the greatest gift apart from the gift of salvation mothers are the greatest gift that was given to mankind right from the garden of eden today i'll be speaking on the topic i've captioned the benefit of a mother i know it's a catchy topic the benefit of a mother. Many, as I'm speaking right now, have the opportunity to have a mother in their lives, but they don't value them. I'm going to go through some quotes I've put together for us. So if you're fast enough, catch it. As you're writing, if you're not fast enough, you can go back and listen to the message. Praise God. A mother is your first friend, your best friend, your forever friend. A mother is your best friend, your first friend, and your forever friend. Mother's friendship don't expire, but they inspire. When you are looking at your mother, you are looking at the purest love you will ever know in life. Mother is the heartbeat in the home. And without her, there seems to be no hard talk in the home. Without her, there seems to be no hard talk in the home. Mothers are like glue. Ah, is somebody with me? Even when you can't see them, they are still holding the family together. Mothers are like glue. Even when you can't see the ability God has given to them gives them the anointing and the strength to hold the family together. Mother is the name for God in the lips of the hearts of little children. 
mother is the name for God in the lips and the hearts of little children each time they say mama it is like we adults yearning for our mother it is no strange thing if i must tell you today that even when the man that was killed by the cop in the united states of america george while they knelt on his neck what he was yearning for and calling for was his mother mama mama You see, women are mysteries. <laughs> that if I say I want to really demystify today the mystery surrounding a woman, I think is a topic that we can handle for like two years stretch every Sunday. Every Sunday, two years stretch. Like you want to demystify a woman. The word mama is so strong that it is a name. You don't even teach a baby how to call. It is internally built inside of every child that one of the first words is mama. Ma. Ma. The connection between a mother and a child from the day of conception is so powerful. I don't want to drift, but I feel tempted. She is the first coverage for the baby. She is the first house. She is a mobile house. Many celebrate Mother's Day, but still go about to mother their mother. So don't see Mother's Day as one of those days that you have to celebrate. I don't know who actually picked this day as Mother's Day. Because for me, every day is a day you celebrate your mother. It should be a lifestyle. Because you see, mothers, mothers are something else. The nature of God is found in a mother. How God nurtures us is found in a mother. That's why the whole world can give up on you. But your mother remains the last person to give up on you. Show me a person that the mother has given up on. I will show you a person that there is no hope. Because mothers are the last to say we have given up. The influence of a mother in the lives of her children is beyond calculation. You know, you can't calculate it. Mothers have very powerful influence. Any man that wants to be a bad father, the name will first come out from the mother. By the time a woman starts telling the children, I say, you see that your father? Bad man. Bad man in the morning. Bad in the afternoon bad at night before you know it the children will say bad father bad father because they have very strong influence
so the, the kind of influence they exhibit is not the type you can put one and two together and call it three you can't calculate it is beyond human comprehension that's why if a woman wants you to succeed you will succeed if she wants you to fail you will fail women are powerful when a ministry is about to be built it is built on the first foundation of women no show me that church that started with men no church every church that ever existed started with women the people that celebrated jesus's ministry was were not his 12 disciples though people that sponsored the ministry of jesus to move further and gave to that ministry were not the 12 disciples hello luke was a professional doctor but he left his profession to follow jesus peter was a professional fisherman am i complicating he left his boat and left everything they all left all to follow christ so they had no means of survival to eat food so they depended on christ to survive but the presence god used to provide for both christ and his disciples were the women in the book of acts you hear about a woman called Dorcas. Dorcas was a woman that took care of other widows and the needy women likes taking care of things give them things they will take care of it that's why i tell you i say if you want to multiply a thing give something to a woman give a woman one sperm she will multiply it and give you back a child give a virtuous woman according to proverbs 31 give a virtuous woman just one seed she will multiply that seed and bring more back to you are you with me there is no role in life that is more essential than that of motherhood when you see a family that lacks the coverage and the hold together of a mother show me that family and i will show you a family that is lacking something heavy please if you've ex experienced the love of a mother in your life jam those hands together and appreciate every mother all over the world praise god give them a standing ovation you can stand wherever you are right now and just jam your hands together for your mother appreciate your mother because she never murdered you yes she kept you alive gave you life gave you her breast don't get tired now praise god clap appreciate her amen you may be seated you see be the the greatest love that you would ever ever want want in life be that love that will shine amongst men and women they are the beacon of love there are two aspects of a woman one of it is when a woman <clears throat> comes up to be a girl that is growing up and she understands what womanhood is she may not know the 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 the, the, the um the need for for herself she may not she may find it difficult to blend into the society but by the time she grabs the understanding of who she is and how powerful she is she goes to the level of being a mother and when she gets to that height of being a mother that is 
the place where she starts brooding over things around her. What do I mean? When the word brooding is to sit upon something, meditating on it, to give life to those things. Now, when you see the mother, mother hen, when she lays her eggs, you find out that she, she, she sits on them. That's brooding. Praise God. She sits on them. That time she's sitting on them, she's transforming those eggs to turn into chicks. That's what mothers do. So the worst thing that will happen to anybody is to be ungrateful to their mother. The last person in life you will ever want to fight or make your enemy is your mother. Fathers are Johnny Walkers. They just move from one location to the other, just like that. But mother, they hold the family. <laughs> Mothers keep the house together. That's why in the scripture, you will not hear a virtuous man. But you will hear a virtuous woman. <laughs> the virtuous woman keeps her home. She takes care of everything. That's why as a mother, one of the greatest gifts you can give to your daughter is to teach her homework. Translate yourself inside of her. Show me a well-trained and disciplined girl that I will show you a well-life pattern mother. Praise God. Genesis chapter 2, verse 20, down to 23. And Adam gave names to all the cattle and to the fowls of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found an help meet for him. Verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep. Listen to this very well. The Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in, instead thereof. Verse 22. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman. And brought her unto Adam. It wasn't God that named Eve Eve. The next verse, verse 23. And Adam said, not God. Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. And she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. You know, a few Sundays ago, I was, um, I spoke to us about demystifying the man God created. Praise God. The mystery behind the man God created. And I told you that man has the ability to create like God. And he can create things and call them names. And they will remain so. That's the power man has. But for woman, there was a mystery behind the woman. God never gathered the dust to create the woman no god took from man god told adam please adam i know you needed help because if you read the verse before 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 verse 20 you will understand that god looked at and said listen if i've made everything but there is not found for man a help meet man was lonely so another role of a mother in a family is to bridge the gap man was lonely that's why each time a man's heart is broken he's looking for a woman any man that you see that his head is not correct take one woman and give to him he will be responsible praise god so each time a man's mindset is unstable 
he is always after mother mama he's no matter how old a man is his mother will still be his mother it, it is only arrogant sons and men that will not understand that you can never grow beyond or grow above your mother Every man desire his mother. Even when he gets married, you still see him. His mother is number one. And when you understand the role of a mother to a child, as a woman or as a wife that is married into a family, I'm not sure that you're going to be jealous because women can be very jealous. Praise God. I'm not sure you're going to be jealous over the kind of relationship and love your husband and the mom they share. It is natural. Because that bond, are you aware that they were sharing just one cord? It is from the mother. The child was feeding. Something held them. The umbilical cord held them together. For the fact the doctor took some scissors and cut that stuff off you, you think the relationship is gone it's a mystery how God could cause a whole human being do you, know, do you know as big as you are you were inside of one woman I don't care how many pounds you are or how many kg you are weighing no matter how big you are you existed inside of a woman and she carried you for nine months. Hallelujah. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 20, Genesis 3, 20, Adam called Eve the mother of all living things. Genesis chapter, Genesis chapter 3, verse 20 Genesis chapter 3 verse 20 and Adam called his wife's name if the name you're hearing if if God was not responsible for it it was Adam Adam said if because she was the mother of all living all living Mothers are dangerous sacrificers. They could die for their children. I mean, a father could be very technical. Praise God. But you see, a mother, if a mother tells a child, they say, Child, instead of you to die, let me die. She means it. And that's why I tell you that the love they exhibit is as the love of Christ unconditional many years ago when I was growing up as a little boy my mom she has always been there for us five boys and three girls there come a time when she would go and sell her clothes just to raise money to take care of us it is only a mother that if she goes to a far country and she has her children back home she will never have peace of mind the bond with her kids are so so much a man could do away and just say well let things sort themselves out but not a mother mothers are so precious God made them that way. Women are so wonderful. They cry when they are happy and they cry when they are sad. Everything makes their very emotional beings. 
And Christ also is an emotional God. The Bible said, and Jesus was moved with compassion. That's why I tell you, I said, that's why women are easy, very easy to assess miracle than men. A man's heart is a stone. Each time the gospel is preached, you find out that women respond first than men. Why? Because something is drawing them. Their nature is speaking. God is a creator. When you give God things, he will, he will, he will magnify that thing and give it back to you. That's how a woman is. Give God one, God gives you two. Give him three, he gives you six. He doubles everything you give to him. So each time there is a call to service, women are first to stand in front. From my little experience in ministry, wives have always been the ones bringing husbands to church. It is not the other way around. What, what then is the reason? Because their nature is, I, 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 in my own you know, definition, a woman, woman is the consciousness, the part of God, the conscious love of God. Let me explain this. I'm a full human being, right? You're looking at me from head to toe. There is a part called the heart. Women are the heart of God. When a man loves, he loves with his heart, not with his head. Am I communicating? Women, they belong to this place. That's why God always looks at us with the eyes of love. Women are actual nature of love. So what God took from man to give back to man was what? <laughs> the rip that was taken from man was the rip of love. And love is a good thing. That's why when you read the scripture, the Bible says that he that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. So that's why God did not, did not you know, you know, finish creating the woman and take the woman to himself. No, he gave the woman back to man because it belongs to man. It belongs to who? To man. So there was some ingredients that constitutes the woman. And that's why sometimes she questions herself. Say, why am I doing what I'm doing? Why am I this soft? Why is it that I cry for nothing? Why is it that joy, anything like being a, that is exciting makes me cry? Sometimes she questions herself when she doesn't have understanding of who she really is. So it becomes even greater that when they give birth to their children, they see their children as their ministry, as their, as their assignment. And when you have a praying mother, a praying mother is another level of a mother. I have a praying mother. Every time I speak to her, you know, we talk. And she said to me, I say, I was praying for you last night. I was praying for you this time. Consistent. And I know it's not just words. Because even while I was with her as a little boy, that was it. She was praying. Always. There is no night we sleep without praying. The first prayer line I learned in life was taught me by my mother. Many of us have experiences of our mother. So cherish your mother. Love your mother. The first thing an enemy will want to do is to separate the bond you have with your mother. I don't care who that friend is. And I don't care who that person is. Anybody that points your mother's weakness to you is an enemy to you. Hear it from me today. 
Anybody that always call you and points your mother's weakness to you is an enemy to you. Because that person doesn't mean well for you. Do you know one thing about mothers? Mothers, they have very strong memory in the family. You would agree with me if your both parents are still alive that there are certain conversations you'll be having with your father that your father will be trying to remember the date. But your mother will give the date. Mom, she will tell you the date happened. Mom, you tell you this one, tell you this one. She will even remind you the kind of clothes you were wearing 15 years ago, 20 years ago, 25 years ago. They have very strong memory. Those are not just by chance. It is who they are. So some things that I want, that I need answers, I don't go to my father. I go to my mother because she knows when it happened. My mother will tell you when it happened and she will tell you everyone that was present that day. These are things that happened 30 something years ago. But their memories are so strong. you ready i'm gonna give us five or yeah five benefits of a mother you ready number one mothers are intercessors mothers are intercessors they go down on their knees and they pray for you they intercede on your behalf even in their dying bed and in the, on their sick bed, they are always thinking of how the children are doing. One of the covenants I entered with God is that nothing around me would die premature. Praise God. And I give glory to God that I have seen God manifest many great miracles. Praise God even the dead coming back to life one of those days death came to take my mother and while I was sleeping she because most of the things most of the powerful things that had happened in my life it was my mother I as a little child growing up I never knew it was my mother that told them to me so she guided me as much as she knows so one of those days, you know, Mr. Death came knocking on the door. And I was sleeping. And I heard my elder sister. And yeah, I heard my elder sister crying. Saying, Mama, no, 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 no. I got up. I said, what's the problem? And when I looked, my mother was just trying to gasp for breath. And she was using the last breath that she has to tell my sister everything we need to know. I looked at her. I said, wait, is this how death comes? I said, no. She was telling my sister, see, I actually borrowed money from so-and-so person. I'm owing so-and-so person. So-and-so person is owing me so-and-so amount of money. And while I was hearing all this, I know that after then is goodbye and that's it. Kum. I said, no. I laid my hands on her chest. And I wept. I cried. I said, God, not so. And not now. And I prayed to God. And I remember the covenant I entered with God. I said, I will bury nothing around me untimely. I said, Father, I invoke that covenant in the name of Jesus. That covenant must bring my mother back. Wherever, as she was there trying to go, I said to her, I said, you are not dying. In the name of Jesus. All her life savings. She told my sister where they were. You know? <laughs> it's very disappointing that finally she didn't die again. I said, now you see, you not told us how much you have. How much you've been sitting on all this while. You know, women can sit on money and you don't know. Mothers? They can sit on money.
in the book of jeremiah chapter 31 verse 15 jeremiah 31 verse 15 it says in rama was there a voice heard lamentation and weeping and great mourning rachel weeping for her children and would not be comforted because they are not it is only a mother that we cry and cry and cry and not cease to cry because something is not happening rightfully to her children it is only a mother so mothers are intercessors if you want to see your day become more blessed in your life stick to a mother <laughs> Mothers will tell you what father cannot remember. And most revelations come to mothers, not fathers. Hello? When the angel came, who did he mean? Jesus. When he came as concerning Jesus, who did angel Gabriel met? It was Mary, not Joseph. The reason why the angel went to Joseph was because of the danger Mary may find herself because she was a virgin and she has not been with a man. So if she takes in, what would happen? Because God has seen it that Joseph would send Mary out. And the angel went not to inform Joseph but to warn Joseph. So the connection of heaven as regarding any destiny is always established with a woman mothers John the Baptist also it was the same thing the name John was the name that was given it was the name that was given to him and the mother was the one that received the, 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 the revelation of the name John because they wanted to give to name him after his father Zachariah and the mother said not so for his name shall be called John and they started arguing and the father used his hand and wrote John the place of a mother in every family is something that everybody must hold dearly are you there Number two, mothers are comforters. Mothers are comforters. Isaiah 62 verse 13, as one whom his mother comforts. You see, mothers are comforters. So will, so will I comfort you. God was speaking. As one whom his mother comforts, so will I comfort you isaiah 66 verse 13 so will i comfort you so just as god comforts us that is how our mothers comfort us that's why any child that dishonors his or her mother will definitely experience discomfort Mothers are filled with wisdom. Mothers are filled with wisdom. Number three, mothers are filled with wisdom. Proverbs chapter 31 verse 26. She opens her mouth with what? Wisdom. Proverbs 31 verse 26. She opens her mouth with wisdom. Praise God. When a mother opens her mouth, mothers are those that talks to your heart. Mothers talk, they talk to your heart, not to your head. That's why when the father gets angry, the father is reacting and is getting into the head of the child. But when the mother takes the child into the room, she speaks to the heart of the child. That's one of the benefits of having a mother. She speaks with wisdom. And the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. Praise God. Give me the amplifier of this scripture. The teaching of kindness 
is in her tongue. And the Amplified says she opens her mouth in what? Are you seeing that? Skillful and godly wisdom. She's a skillful talker. And the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. Giving what? Counsel and what? Instruction, not destruction. I see Mother's Day if there should be a day because I believe mothers should be celebrated every day. But I see Mother's Day as a day of reflection for every person. Because there is nobody that is alive today or dead that was not born by a woman. That's why I asked a question to the workers in our work, last workers training. I said, the, the chicken and the egg, which one came first? <laughs> Praise God. She's a very skillful person. Do you know that mothers may not have good education? But when they cancel, they cancel most of us that are well educated. And their words are wisdom. When you apply it, it blesses your life. That's why it's a shame to anybody that will look on their parents and say to their parents, I say, you didn't go to school, so therefore you can't talk to me. You see that hand you're doing like this? Hello, you're rolling your head. You're doing like this. Keep doing it. Very soon the head you're rolling will fall off. Because an ear that doesn't listen to instruction, counsel, wise counsel, and advice, we definitely, when the head is cut off, the ears will follow. You know, somebody look at their parents and just say, you, you're an old fool. And you call yourself a meninia. <laughs> you give yourself a name. You know, we are of this new age. We are the meninia babies. We do our stuff. We do them. We catch them. We do them. <laughs> Keep doing. You don't know how powerful your mother is. That's why you're misbehaving. If your mother go on her knees for one day and remind God how you sucked her breast and the pain was on her, your days are finished here on earth. If she crosses you, you are gone. Their mouth are so powerful. Their tongue is sharper than any sword. And as swift it is, so it is also the bless. So it is also, it takes time for them to pick offense and come to the level of cursing what they gave birth to. Don't make your mother angry. If your mother was angry, just go and beg her. Praise God. Because if they get angry with you, your heavens will close. Others will be experiencing rains of blessings. You will be telling stories of your past. You know? <clears throat> I tell people, I say, listen, your story of yesterday is not good for today. Stop telling those old testimonies. Do you know me before? Ah, before? I used to be. I used to be. Please tell us what is happening now to you. I used to have money. I used to be this. I used to be that. I used to have the latest car. So what is happening today? people that used to tell the testimony of I used to before, me before, me before are those that their heavens have closed. Because the steadfastness of the Lord, the Bible says they are renewed every morning. Meaning God refreshes his blessings upon you every day you rise up. If God had no need for you here on earth again, I tell you, you wouldn't be alive. You would sleep and he will call you. But because you are alive today, he has reason for you to be here on earth. Put your hands together for the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Number four, right now, right? Mothers are the source of all living things. Mothers are the source of all living things. 
Genesis chapter 3, verse 20. We've read that before. The man called his wife. The man called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Praise God. Adam called the name of his wife Eve because she was the mother of all living. So anything you think that you have become today, as you thank God for it, please have some time to appreciate your mother. Because if your mother wanted to destroy you, she would have aborted you. Aborting a child is ending a whole dynasty and a whole destiny. Are you with me? Number five, as I round up. Mothers are teachers. Proverbs chapter one. Verse number 8, then to 9. Mothers are teachers. Mothers are teachers. Mothers are teachers. Everything a child learns first, learns from the mother. Are you aware that it is the mother that knows when the child takes their first step? I'm not always there. It's my wife that would tell me and say, oh, do you know the baby just took their first step? Do you know this just happened? Do you know that just happened? You know why? Because we as men, our eyes are outside. We want to protect our family from the prying eyes of the enemies. So, but the inner house is being taken care of by the mother. So, it is the mother that reports to the man the events inside. It is the man that reports to the woman the events outside. Don't forget that. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8, down to 9. Listen, my son, to your what? father's instruction. Do you remember our mother st- telling us, listen to your father. Listen to your father. Listen, because she is the voice of wisdom. Listen to your father. Listen, my son, to your father's instruction. And do not forsake your mother's word teaching. Do not forsake your mother's teaching. He said, he said, he said, he said, they are garland to grace your head and a chain to adorn your neck. Give me the amplify. Praise God. For they are a what? A garland of grace on your head and chains and ornaments of what of gold around your neck the teachings of your mother that introduces the instruction of your father will keep you from destruction you know women are very sensitive when a woman sees danger from afar the man doesn't see it when a, when, when your mother sees a bad friend the friend may not look to you as bad but when they see a bad friend they tell you is it this one is it this one you say yes they say stay away from this one if only some of us had listened to those teachings sometimes we get angry with our mother and say you are so picky you pick on people every time blah 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 but that is it she senses danger like a shark from thousands of miles away I don't know of you, but I'm glad that my mother gave birth to me. Praise God. And I'm proud of my mother, just as you must, not should, you must be proud of your mother. Because the process at which a man, a woman goes through when she conceives a child is not a joke. Some of us, we eat too much, even while inside the, inside the womb. We eat too much and give the woman so much weight. By ourselves, even from the womb, we have disfigured our mothers. Some of them, their spine cord was, was that, behind them, their spinal cord was straight. Because of you, as tall and long as you are, with big head, their spinal cord is now, is now bent, walking this way, like this. 
and when you come out you have the audacious audacity to speak to them in a way ha ah, some of us need to go back home and ask our mothers for forgiveness you know some people don't value the use of a mother until they find out that, that they have no one like i said they are your closest friends forever And they are even willing, even as old as you are right now, they are even willing to work for you. They are, if up to this time, they are willing to help you. And when you choose who you want to talk to arrogantly, it's your mother. May God have mercy on us. Because some of us, it is not the devil that is attacking you. No, it is your attitude and character towards your mother that has locked your heavens. The Bible says, he that curseth his father and his mother, he says, his days shall be few. His lamp shall be put off. You know what that means? Untimely death. Pray that you will understand the real mystery behind the mother. And I pray that you will understand what it means to appreciate your mother. Rise up to your feet wherever you are. Father, Lord, we give you praise. Just give God thanks for the word you've heard. Just thank the Lord. Say, Father, thank you for what I've heard. Thank you for speaking to me personally. Thank you for releasing this word to my spirit. Thank you for ministering to my heart. Somebody open your mouth right now and begin to give God praise. Just thank the Lord. Thank God for what he has done. Thank the Lord for, for the great hand of ministration over your life. Lord God, I give you all praise and glory. For all that you have done, for giving us understanding to demystify that that you have sent us in, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you all praise. In one voice, let's open our mouth and thank God for our mothers. Thank God for your mother. Thank God for the love that she showed to you. Thank God for her. She may be alive, she may have gone to be with the Lord, but still thank God for giving her as a gift to you. Thank Him, thank Him, thank Him for the life that she passed on to you. Come on, go ahead and thank Him. Go ahead. Thank Him, thank Him, thank Him, thank Him. Thank you, Jesus. In one minute, I want you to open your mouth and pray for your mother and ask the Lord to strengthen her. You may have somebody in your life that plays the role of a mother. Use that person as a point of contact. Say, Father, I thank you for this one. I thank you for strengthening her. Thank God, thank God for that that he has done. Let your name alone be glorified, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we we'll pray. Let that amen come like thunder. Father, we thank you as your children. We thank you for the gift of a mother to mankind. We thank you for the mystery. We thank you for the revelations surrounding our mothers. We thank you for their weaknesses also because we know that you make all things perfect. We say may your name be glorified. We pray for strength to every mother all over the world. 
I pray right now in the name of Jesus that they will never fail in their assignments to raise godly children. I pray for wisdom and the ability to cast out darkness and devil. Thank you, O oh Lord, for giving them that role to play in our lives. And I say, may your name alone, Jehovah, be glorified. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And amen. And amen. Jam those hands together to the Lord. Hallelujah.